Hi, I'm Kornick from Paint and Porcelain. I'm here to teach beginners how to get started in China painting and also to encourage those of you that have been painting for a while to paint along with us. And today we are going to be working on acorns. We're going to be using egg, um, an orange of some sort, whatever orange you have. It should be a fairly vibrant orange and it should go well with greens. So not the cadmium colors, those are too bright, but um, something that's like a, a rich orange, okay? Um, this is chartreuse and I have moss green. I know I said uh, a light and a dark. The dark green is the uh, black green. And, you know, I put medium tone in there too because you never know when you're going to need it. A light and a dark brown. Now I use, this is warm brown gray and it's a, a great light brown for me. And the rich brown, of course, is just perfect for like branches and things like that. Now I threw an ivy ivory on. You don't have to. You don't have to use the ivory if you don't want to. But I find that sometimes when you are working on the background, it's nice to have an ivory out there so that if you don't know exactly what to put there, you can kind of figure it out. So I'm going to put you down, and I'm going to show you exactly how I designed this so that. Hopefully, now it's leaves. Leaves are easier to design than flowers. Flowers are much more difficult, but I figure if I show you the leaves, it would work for pine cones um, as well, because all you have to do is figure out where you want the needles to be, and then you can fill the pine cones in. I'm using my, uh, my turntable again, because I've looked at the past videos, and I honestly think the turntable is probably easier for you to see, and then I hold it up as I do things than if I were to try to um, hold it the whole time. So, for designing now, I usually use a pencil. I like the Stabilo pencils, that's S-T-A-B-I-L-O pencils. Um, I get them from Dick Blick, but you can get these at any art supply store. They're a soft lead. This is the red ones that we used to have all the time when I, and that's also, um, this is also a Stabilo, but the red ones seem to be a hard lead and they don't work as well on the china. See, it just, it just doesn't work as well. So I like this one because you'll be able to see it. You can also use a, um, here we are, a Sharpie. And they everything, all of these will fire off, so you don't have to worry about that. Okay, the first thing I do when I'm designing is especially with leaves is I decide where I want my focal point now this is the one we're going to be doing today this is my focal point up at the top and I use an odd number because odds numbers are um, easier to use the uh, easier and more interesting to paint than um, even numbers it just makes things look better so um, you want an odd number in that big grouping I'll show you what I did first. This is my um, first attempt, and I really didn't like the composition on this. It seemed real heavy with acorns on this side and nowhere else. So when I redid it, I took care of that. Now the first thing I do when I'm designing something where you have a lot of leaves is I decide which way the stems are going to go. So I find the top and I have one stem that I wanna have go this way, and it's a curve. Another stem I'm going to put this way. Then I'll turn it upside down and I'll decide what way I want the stem in the middle to go. And usually it's like this. Now the reason I do that, now it's not the stem, it's the main vein. Then I put in my leaves. So with these leaves, they're oak leaves. So they're a white oak leaf that I'm using. And the white oak leaf is like this. You go uh, out a little bit, then in then out a little bit, and then down. You have a rounded edge, and then you repeat it kind of on the other side. That's an oak leaf. Now you're gonna do another one here. Now I usually get a little, a little more creative and do a little jiggy-jaggy. You don't have to though. And then I turn it upside down. Now this one, you're not gonna have the whole leaf showing because it's going to go under this leaf. So I start on the side that's going to show and then I come around to the other side and just let it die off into the the top. Pretty easy. 
Now, there are a, a number of different ways that you can put um, the designs on. You can make an S, you can make a C. Um, I kind of prefer the C. So here's the side of it. I'm gonna take and I'm gonna draw a line like this and a line like this. There's my C. Can you see the C right there? Alrighty. Now, as you go to these far ends, things are gonna get smaller. They're not gonna stay as big as they were. So down here, I'm gonna, I wanna put a leaf in, so I'm gonna kind of make the vein there so I know. And over here, I might wanna put a leaf in, so I'm gonna make a vein there. I'm also gonna put the little stem that the leaf is on. Here. I think that's good. And um, maybe, well, there's not enough room on this one. I made these leaves kind of large, so I won't put the extra one they had on, the, on there. Um, I might put something, well, I'll do the acorns there. Okay, so here I'm going to put my leaf. Over here I'm gonna put just a small leaf. Now that one's folded and over. And then I have one more to do here. Okay, so this is what I have so far. Um, now it's time to put the acorns in. So I'm gonna put maybe one up here, one over here, maybe one that's hidden back here. Um, and then these are gonna be a little bit smaller here. And then I would put, oh, say maybe one here and I, a lot of times when they come out, they come out this way and they branch, so you could put a few smaller ones here and maybe one here. Don't wanna to get too busy. And then for acorns, so see this is, now that's what I have. For acorns, you're gonna to wanna to come about a third of the way up and just draw the little cap thing so you remember that the, you can decide what direction they're going. And this one, I'm just gonna do that because it's the bottom and I might do a little here and I might do a little here and a little here and there. So that gives me the way I want them to go. So that's how I would design my plate. You could put something down in here if you wanted. You know, you just, you have to be careful. If you get too much on, you can erase what you don't want. But this at least gives you an idea of how I go about designing a plate. Okay. We're gonna set that aside and we're actually gonna to get to the real plate. <laughs> and this is the one that I've done and I have ready for today. Now you can see, I did this with a Sharpie and for me the Sharpie is great because it allows me to flip over some of these and I can be a little more, I, I'm a more sketchy when I draw. And um, so I try to make the edges a little more irregular. I think it makes them a little more interesting. Okay, so we're gonna use my number 10, that's my, my Favorite brush of all time. Now, let me get these instructions. We're going to start with the leaves. And I'm not going to do the background on this time. I did try it. I had um, I had background done um, before. And it, it just didn't work for me. Um, I didn't think I could explain it easily to a beginner. Uh, for a beginner, doing the background and the leaves and everything at the same time, I think is just really, really difficult. So... I thought this way we'll break it down and we'll just do the leaves and then we'll do the background. So I'm right-handed. I'm going to start up in this corner up here and uh, I'm just going to bring it in like this. I'm using chartreuse full load and a side load of black green. And I'm going to just go down that center section with like little tiny strokes. And then I'm going to kind of turn it and even those strokes out by just pulling them lightly to the end. You come back further on your brush in order to do this feathering, okay? Then I'm gonna take a more chartreuse. This time I'm gonna put a little orange on it because these are fall leaves, and I'm just gonna do it down here at the bottom. Alrighty, now we're gonna go on the other side. I'm back to, haven't cleaned my brush, full load of chartreuse, partial load of the black green, and I'm going to make it dark here where the acorn is because there would be a little bit of a shadow there. 
and and then I'm going to go around the outside of the leaf oops and then I'm going to do a little here maybe add a little orange there so it's a little more yeah that's better and then I'm going to pull them lightly I'm feathering that's with the end of this lightly to the center I'm leaving this section in the middle here. Let me pull these out a little bit more. <laughs> I'm leaving this section in the middle as a highlight because you're going to need your highlights now if you can't get them back after the first coat if you don't put them on there. Now, because this is a turn back here, can you see that turn back? Yeah. I'm going to take dark. I'm going to do a full load of chartreuse, the side load of the black green, and I'm going to go right down that middle, almost like I did with the center of the vein there. And go over here and do it too. Because you're going to have a shadow because it's turned over. Let me pull this out a little. There we go. And then I'm going to just add a little orange because I've got plenty of green on my brush now and I'm just going to come up in here. Oh, it gets a little muddy. I'm going to clean it. Can you see that mud? It's just not very pretty. I thought it would be fine, but I think I had too much of the black green on there and so it, it got real muddy and that's not what I want there. I want a, a nice clean orange. See, that's much better. I know it's heavy. I'm going to fix that. Okay, and I might put a little down on the edge here. And I'm just going to pull it in a little and pull it out a little. Remember, it's it's your feathering with the end of your brush you, that really makes the difference when it comes to getting your colors to blend or to soften. You really want to do that. And now I'm cleaning my brush, and I'll show you what I've done so far. And I'm just going to use, I think this time I'm going to take a little yellow, full load of yellow with a side load of chartreuse. And I'm just going to come along the bottom of this here, let the yellow go up, because I want that to be bright. Okay. Now we're back to this leaf. And guess what I'm going to do? Chartreuse with a side load of black green. And I'm just going to do the center here. On both sides Oop, a little heavy if it's too heavy take your brush and just pat it like this on your towel and that will immediately make it so that you can work with the color without it being horrible and and real dark because that that's awful when it gets that way okay and you want to do the edges of your leaves because th those you will lose when you fire if you don't do them. And I want to get a little more color on this side. Eh? This actually isn't in shadow, so we want to do a little more color. Let me grab a little orange. There, that's better. Okay. And again, I just soften it. I'm going on the end of my brush and I'm just pulling gently, ever so gently. These are very simple to do as long as you draw your leaves, uh, you know, well, and so you have something to work from. I usually do the center of the leaf at the top if it's going to go, because it's bending back, see here? So you want that dark up there because it's going to go back underneath these things. And then I'm going to come down the center here like that. And just little little short strokes and then I'm going to come up this way and out this way okay and then I just brush it and here there's kind of a sharp line so I think I'm just going to brush a little more just to get rid of that sharp line okay there are my leaves and then I'm going to continue the leaves down here they are not going, they're going to be smaller and they're not going to be as well defined as this because after all, they are background leaves. They aren't the, the front, you know, the main, the main show. So here I'm just putting a little bit of color in 
and then a little bit, oops, need a little more, a little bit of color on this side, and I'm just following the edge like that. And they're not, it's not going to be real well defined because these are not the center of attention. These others are. Okay, and over here, I'm going to do the same thing. Go down the center. And then I'll take a little moss green and flip it around and do a little moss green here and here. And a little chartreuse with orange over on this side right here. And you know, the nice thing about oranges, if you put it in a spot that's not a normal spot, for, and you think, why did I put it there? It doesn't matter because leaves don't turn according to the way you want them to anyway, so. Alrighty, so here, let me turn it the right way. There you go. Oh. Okay. We have a little leaf here and then one that's half over. So the half over one, I'm gonna do with the yellow and the chartreuse right here. This is my half leaf. It may look a little hard. Oops, wait, I didn't get it quite enough. I'm now, let me, there, this is better. And I'm just gonna I'm just lightly putting this in. And then the final leaf is right here. I, I think I'm gonna shorten that leaf. I'm not as happy with it as I thought I would be. So I'm gonna take off this little end here. I put a little turpentine on my finger and I have uh, my Kleenex here and I'm just gonna get rid of that. And then I'm just gonna do a little orange here. Oh, oh. <laughs> a little too much orange, hang on. And just put a little green on the end of it because it'll work. Give me that little, <laughs> everything's going on heavy. Sorry about that there. And then I'm gonna wipe it off on my towel and I'm gonna go back and fix this because this is just way too heavy. There we go. So that's what I want. I just want a suggestion of those leaves and um, I'll play with them a little more before I put them in the kiln, but you get the basic idea. Now we're gonna do the stems and the acorns. Now for my acorns, I like to use this rounded brush. And, um, the reason I like the, the rounded brush is because of course the acorns are rounded. I start out with yellow and put a little yellow on my acorns on the side that's gonna get the light. And I do that on all my acorns. This one, um, I think this one, the light's probably gonna be right there. And this one is one of those that just has the bottom facing up. So there you go. And do a little here. Now this is first coat. You're not gonna get real fancy on the first coat. You're just trying to get the lights and darks in you can get more of the um, lights and dark, the, the fancy stuff in on the later coat, the second coat, as long as you keep things fairly light. And remember, a lot of this is gonna fire out because that's just the nature of some of these colors in your kiln. So if you're not happy with them, you'll have a chance to correct them just because they don't stay the way they should. <laughs> All right, then I'm gonna use the warm brown gray and I'm just going to go on the side of the acorn that's colored and, or that's shaded, and I'm going to pull the warm brown gray around. Next time, I'm going to add some color, like greens and oranges and things to these acorns. But right now, I'm just doing a two-tone color because I figure it's, it's the easiest. And for a beginner, you don't want to get too many colors on that first coat. Like I said, you can add them later. Hang on, lost my shape of my brush. There we go. Okay, so this is, let me turn it, make you dizzy. I just put the light in the dark. I put a yellow and then uh, here's the, um, the brown. So, and up on the, now, I saw a lady at the Indiana school and I wanna say it was Kathy Lewis, but I'm not positive who explained how to do the caps of the um, 
of the little acorns. And I have to tell you, she did the coolest explanations for beginners I had ever heard. Um, so I'm going to try to um, use a little bit of what I heard her say, because I actually like the way she did it better. Now you notice I'm going around and cleaning up a little bit. I will do more later, but you really have to clean up on this fire or you're gonna lose the shape of your leaves and or they'll have this weird thing and you'll go, I wonder what that was supposed to be. A lot of times it's easiest just to push the color back where it belongs. And that's what I'm doing with this right here. See, I can push the color back where it belongs. Oops, I didn't have enough turpentine on there. There, still a little there and there. Okay, so that's what I did just to clean it up. Oh, there you go. So what she did was this. I'm going to take a slightly smaller brush. Let me see where that brush got off to. I was using these brushes all yesterday. Here it is. Oh, is that it? No, that's not it. Luckily, some of my brushes have a funny bottom. Here it is. They have this cutout bottom. These are the ones I got from Burgett Porter. And um, they have that funny cutout bottom, which is terrific because I can find them and they look a lot like some of the other brushes I have. This is a number, oh gosh, I've used it so much I've worn off the number. It looks like a number two and it's one of her rounded brushes. I took my, my lighter brown and I, I'm, uh, let me do it on this one here. I think it's a little bit bigger. You might be able to see it. I'm coming really close if I can. I'm doing almost like a little X, but it's not, across here and coming up into here. Then I'm going back with my dark brown, my rich brown, and I'm doing the same thing. But I'm not making those silly X's that people make on them. I'm not actually making an X, I'm just painting it in a hash way so that you get a little variation. And if you look at it, oh, here, let's get this here. Then I will take my pen on the second fire and I will go back and make the edge a little more jagged on him. And then I'm gonna put a little thing down here at the bottom. Oh, I may need to wait and do that with a pen right here. And there's one right here. So I start out with the light brown and then I do the dark brown. Let me put a little light brown up in here and a little light brown over in here. But I'm, I'm just kind of overlapping them because what I want is if you look at, um, I don't, do I have any pictures? Um, I don't have a picture here, but um, if you look at them, they kind of overlap on the um, on the acorn. Now I know the center section is is not filled in right here. I will do that next fire. I'm not gonna I'm not gonna worry about all the little picky things this time. I'm just gonna get the basics laid in. And I'm just going to do the same thing on these guys. Go one direction, then go back another direction. Whatever works to try to get that, that look. They're a little bit flat on top. There's my acorn there. And I'll whip this one off here. Go that way. And then I'll turn my, oh, turn my brush this way and come back and leave it a little patterned. Oops, could use a little more dark gray here. Okay. And I got a little paint in here. Let me get rid of that. There we go. Push it over. Okay. And then I'm gonna do the same thing up at the top. Go that way, come back this way. Uh, I've been sort of double loading the brush. That works too. Do this little guy here this way. Oops, I need a little oil. And come back the other way. Okay. 
and you can get lighter as you go further away. So these down here, I'm making just the warm brown. I have to do them upside down. I don't know why that is, but I have to do them upside down. They just seem to work better. And I'm just touching them in different directions to kind of get the, the look. There are my little acorn caps. And then I put the little, the little piece at the bottom. Now, if they're, if they're too thick, they'll look silly. So I'm just doing it real lightly right now. And I'll look at them, and if they look too dumb, I'll take them off and I'll do them with a pen on the second time. So then the only other thing you still have to do is your branch. And of course, branches are fairly simple. You're just gonna draw your, draw your line, make it a little thicker as it gets near the top. You may want to do this. I think I'm going to use my um, my liner. There you go. And you can change what you did. So if you don't like what you did, you can change it as you're doing this. Like here. Look, for instance, right here. I had this coming over this way. Well, now I see I don't want that. So I made it different. And, you know, that's your prerogative. Okay, and then I'm going to come over here and just do a couple of the, uh, run them right into the, into the leaf if you want. And remember, if you don't get them dark enough on this one or you don't get them thick enough, that's fine. You may even want to go back with your eraser. Hang on, let me just get this guy here. This one there. See, I'm not following my lines like I should because they're not exactly where I want them to be. I want them to go more, like this one I think needs to go more in the top of this guy. So I'm gonna take off that other line. And that's your prerogative. See, I've got two lines here. I'm gonna remove this one. You'll still see it because I drew it there but I think that that way they fit a little better. And then I'm gonna go up in here and here. Bring it down. Try to come around here. And here. And I'm probably going to have to do something up in here to make that connection. And I can make it thicker. Make this a little thicker. And then you can take your pico pay if you want and just rough it up a little. So, oops. So you have a little, a little texture on there. And maybe a little here. See what I'm doing? I'm just doing a couple little things like this. Because next time when I put the brown on, it'll look more like a bark or something. Okay. That's it. I'm done. Alrighty. Pick up those brushes. Keep painting. I'll see you next time. Bye-bye. I hope you enjoyed the program. And I hope you'll take a minute to subscribe so that other people can learn more about China painting and we can get the word out to more people. Uh, you also can look at the links below. Uh, my paintandporcelain.com website has a lot of freebies and printables for uh, new and experienced painters, as well as studies, supplies, and even some of my hand-painted china. So thank you again, and I'll see you next time.